Man, you already know what it is. Jay Williams, let's live life, and we're back. Today's story is inspired by a guy that I was locked up with. So while in jail, I ran across a guy that I had done time with, a guy that I knew pretty well. A guy by the name of TJ. Not TJ, not Night and Hill, not the one that I talked about in the previous video that passed away, but a guy that I know from a different building on the same compound I was in. I actually spent a good amount of time with this dude. He would always be in and out of our building trying to hustle this, hustle that, trying to collect this, collect that. TJ's a heavy set black guy, probably 6'3", somewhere around 300 pounds. Loves to play poker, is great at poker, and will take all your money on the poker table. TJ also knows a lot of the guys that I've talked about in my videos. One in particular, Radar. Radar, Radar, Radar. I work maintenance with Radar. Boss once told him, he said, Radar would rather tote a boy before he towed a tool. At which we all laughed. Radar was also a booty bandit. Radar had a thing for white dudes. And Radar, by all means necessary with his life sentence, would take it. Oh yes, indeed. He would take it. Radar had a name for himself. Radar had been down over 20 plus years when I met him. And I think I met Radar around 2008, 2009. And then I would work with him. For many years after that. But he had made a name for himself that uh wasn't good. He was known for pushing things to the limit, if you will. He was known for taking things where most people wouldn't take it. And like I said, he was going to get what he wanted by all means necessary. Radar was a guy that would fight to get what he wanted. He would also bring weapons into play. Radar was not a good man. I'm not going to say if Radar deserves to be in prison for life, but based off of the things he did while in prison, hmm, you can make your own judgment. I'm not God. We go out one day a week. We get to go outside. When I say go outside, we're on a roof with brick walls around us and chain link fence on the ceiling or whatever you want to call it, but you can see the sky. It's mandatory. You go out once a week and when you go out, they come in, they tear themselves up, they look for things and it's jail. So you really don't have much. But it's sitting there, I keep looking at TJ. I'm like, man, I know this dude. And he looks at me, he goes, you was up Greensville. I said, yeah, where'd I know you from? He's like, TJ, eight building. You was in seven building. You was in there with da, 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 da. And I was over there with da, da, da. And I'm like, I do know you. I remember you. I used to, da, da, da. We talked. And he says, hey, tell these boys about such and such. And tell, like, we get to talking. And he brings up a story that completely slipped my mind. It had been a long time. And I've talked on Radar. I've talked about things Radar did, type of person Radar was. You know what? We're just going to go ahead and get into today's story. When a booty bandit tries the wrong boy, when a booty bandit tries a gang member, <laughs> thought he could just take it from any old white boy he wanted. Boy, oh boy, was he wrong. He tried the right one this time and got something he had never gotten before. With all that being said, you know I'd have seen it. You know I'd have lived it. So... Let's relive it. We start with Radar. I guess we start with his initial incarceration. Radar came into prison when prison was a much different place. Radar came into prison prior to the whole trans movement, prior to so many guys coming out the closet. Radar came in 20 plus years prior to me meeting him. Radar's got natural life, no possibility of parole. Radar is, he's a killer. No other way to put it. Took some lives, and for that, rather than take his life, they sat him down for the rest of his life. Like I said, the trans movement hadn't started yet. Guys coming out the closet hadn't started yet. When he came in prison, if you've seen somebody walking around in tight shorts and a, and a homemade skirt with lipstick on, I'm talking M&Ms on their lips, whatever they could use, highlighters, magic markers, Kool-Aid, if you've seen somebody walking around as a female, nine times out of ten, it wasn't by free will. Nine times out of ten, another man had pressed up on that man and made that man do that. That guy wasn't strong enough to hack it. Or just enough people rolled down on him that even if he was, in the end, he didn't have a say-so in the matter. Radar was one of those guys that would, when he was younger, realized... Well, I'm not going to ever be with a woman again. Now, not all men are like this, but he realized I'm not going to ever be with a woman again. So I got to make best with what I have. So what did he choose? To start victimizing other guys. 
But not just any other guy. He had a thing for white men. Now, upon meeting Radar, he was one of many, many, many booty bandits I met along the way. What's a booty bandit? A booty bandit is a man that takes the innocence of another man. They come in all shapes and sizes, black, white, short, tall, fat, skinny. Some are real aggressive and muscular. Some are even feminine. I've met some that acted like a girl and that would pull the knife, pull the knife, Big Dana, and take what they wanted. Put it right up on it. You can get it to me, I'll cut it off. Booty bandits are a common thing out here. And people ask, well, why don't y'all do anything to them? For number one, there's no unity. For number one, there's not any group of men that are that are going to just come together and say, hey, we're going to go deal with him. No, it's pretty much a one-on-one -on -one basis out here. Every man for himself. So you go over there and you mess with that if you want to. And you might be on the wrong end of a knife when it's all said and done. He might take his focus off of whoever he was messing with and now turn his attention to you. Now, these aren't normal guys. You're thinking, well, if, if he's a man just like me. No, this is not a man just like you. This is a man with nothing to lose. This is a man that will take your life because they can't do anything to him. They abolished parole in Virginia. So if he decides to take your life, the most he's going to do is what he's already doing, life. If you come in with five, ten years, your goal is to get out of prison, go home, be with your family, be a productive member of society again. The last thing you want to do is get in prison and do something in prison. That means you're never going to go home again. And I've seen that as well. Upon meeting Radar, other people had already told me about Radar. When I first started off, I was in Nine Building. Everybody starts off in this building called Nine Building. That's kind of the transition building. They're going to put you in this pod down there, and then they're going to figure out where you're going to go in the compound. So when I initially come in, Radar's in that pod. Radar had been at this prison for a very long time. He didn't want to leave. And why is that? Because it's so big. It's one of the last real prisons in Virginia. When I mean prisons, it's like penitentiary status all day. Anything you can think about is there. Guys are running rampant. And when I first come in, one of the first things I, I realized is this place is like the projects. I'm walking down the tier and I can smell just the weed all in the air. Dudes are in their cells smoking freely like nobody cares. The guards on this shift and this pod in general never came in. You wouldn't see them until it was count time. So you see them at 5.30 in the morning. You see them at noon. You see them at 5.30 in the afternoon. And then you see them at night when you lock down. Other than that, there was never any guards in there. So I walked down this tier. Man, he's smoking heavy in here. Smoking was still allowed in prison, but there was so much tree in the prison that dudes were just rolling up and blowing, blowing trees all day long. I see guys drinking. Now, at this point, this is right prior to a whole bunch of officers getting let up off the compound for bringing in contraband. This is one of the first, it's not the first time I've seen it, but it's at the largest scale that I've seen guys drinking liquor from the streets. I walk by a cell and I see a guy with a pint in a cell. And I, I really couldn't, you're not supposed to look in cells, but I'm the new guy. I'm going to check my surroundings. If I get into it with somebody because I'm looking around, hey, look, I didn't mean to look in your cell, man. I'm new here. I'm just trying to see what's going on. But I walk by one cell and the dude's in there smoking and they're passing around a pint. That same evening, somebody got caught on what we call the boulevard, which is a strip of concrete that goes to the chow hall with a bottle hanging out of his back pocket. I want to start, come here, come here, and pulled the bottle out of his pocket. I'm like, yo, there's just stuff everywhere. I get in the cell with this dude, not radar, but another dude, which he fills me in on the guys in here. Hey, you need to watch out for him. If he comes up to you, watch out for him. And then he brings up radar. You really need to watch out for radar. I need to watch out for radar for you know, I got a thing for white guys. I'm not your average white guy. I'm not bad. I'm not a little sh ah. sheep. I don't come in here all scary. Like, I came in with a whole bunch of tattoos, good size on me. Like, I'm not the little frail guy that walks through the door. I'm not the guy that if you're looking to, to victimize somebody, there's, there's a whole lot of guys in here that you're going to get less resistance from than me. So I'm usually not the one to try. I see other white guys in there. I see Radar on the top tier and he's lean and he's zoned in looking at dudes. Now, Radar is a light-skinned, bald-headed black guy. If I had to guess, Radar is in his mid-50s at this point. But looking at him, you wouldn't think it. You would think maybe he's in his early 30s. Prison preserves you. There he stands on the top tier, zoned in. Looking around. Trying to see what he can see. And what does he see? An influx of white dudes coming in. It wouldn't be long after that. I got into a fight that day. A whole bunch of stuff transpired. But I would only be in that building a few weeks before they moved me to my permanent housing unit, 7 building, the Terror Dome. A few years after being at this place and being locked up at this compound, I get the maintenance gig. I get on the maintenance crew. 
I work maintenance. I go around anything inside the prison needs to be fixed. I fix it. Gears break in the door. I fix it. Lights go out. I fix it. Panel box explodes in the basement. Seen it. Happened. Four foot of water. We're wading down there. And there's just electricity sparking everywhere. I fix it. As soon as I started maintenance, I noticed something real quick. There were two guys on the maintenance crew that should not have been on the maintenance crew. Radar and Barbie Dog, a.k.a. Dog. Radar, hey, you was down nine building. Yeah, I was down nine building. Oh, and that's what's up. My name's Radar. I know who you are. <laughs> I mean, like, everybody knows who you are. Everywhere you go, you either got a boy with you or you're chasing a boy. Or every other day, you got a new boy. We all know who you are, especially if you're a white dude. We 100% know who you are because you like to hunt white dudes. Oh, that's what's up. That's what's up. Radar never tried his hand with me. Never came at me like that. I didn't put off any feminine traits. I didn't put off anything that said, hey, you can try me. Things are going to turn out well. No, I'm not the one. So like I said, I never had any issues with Radar. But Radar did something that was just weird. When we didn't have anything to fix in the buildings, these floor buffers, these guys would use these things 16, 20 hours a day. And then they would go to the next power. They'd be used 16, 20 hours a day. They were ran nonstop to the point they would break down. The brushes in them would go bad. Different things would happen. And we would have to take these things into the maintenance shop and fix them. Along with washers, dryers, televisions, like fans, all these different things throughout the prison. They're not into replacing big items. No, they buy repair kits and we fix them. The maintenance shop gets hot in the summer, so we open the maintenance door. When you open the maintenance door, all the new intakes come in and they just get into the prison. They open another door where they come down this hallway and that is positioned right across from the maintenance shop. So any new guys that come in, we see them before anybody else sees them. Radar would sit on his bucket, fixing these buffers, fixing whatever, and he would face that door. And as new guys come in, Radar would lock in. Hey, hey, you see that girl? And we'd all look over. And then you realize real quick, we're in prison. What girl? Unless he's talking about a guard. We know all the guards. Man, you see Shotty, you see the girl. You see the girl. And Radar would hop up and run out to make the shop and chase after the new guys. Now, if you go look behind Radar, Radar's chasing a boy. It ain't no girls. He's chasing a boy. Hey, hey, what, what your name is? My name Radar. My name Radar. With his round glasses and his little army man physique that he kept intact. Like he was like, you just going out on date night. Like this dude... He's one of them guys, he'd be a, considered a muscle head in the real world that's always chasing females, except these weren't females. I watched him do this time and time again. There were times I seen the boys, hey, what you doing? Interact with him real well. And then there were times I seen dudes like, hey, man, get up, back up off me. It ain't even like that. No, 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 no. That was Radar's MO. Radar would brag about the things he did. Man, just bagged a new, the other day, man, they brought in the pod. And, man, I'm, yeah, he'd talk about it freely like that was the thing to do. My boss, Mr. The other boss, Mr. They would sit there and they would laugh like, this is crazy. You got to think these are men from the real world. These are men that go home to their wives, their grandchildren, their children. This is not their world. They come in for eight to 10 hours a day and they go home. But while in here, they witness the same things we witness. And they would watch Radar do this and they would just be like, oh my, geez, like, what am I watching? I'm watching a grown man chase another man down the hallway talking about, look at her. And they would just look at each other like, maybe we should consider new careers. This would go on time and time again. One day, a whole bunch of new intakes come in. It's a tall white dude in this group of intakes. Now, I'm not going to lie. I could see why Radar would think that maybe dude played ball. I could see why Radar would think that he could push up on this dude. Radar runs out to make the shop. There's probably 10, 12 guys coming in. They got their bags. They got their box. They got their little stuff. Some have transferred in from other prisons. Some are new, fresh from intake, from receiving. Some of these guys are, you know, haven't been locked up a year or two. Some of these guys have been locked up 20 years. But there's this tall white guy in the group. And looking at him, I got to be honest, he had that little twitch with him. You know the twitch? One of the boys got, like when they walk, their hips kind of pop. Almost like advertising, like they're making them... Cheeks clap. This dude had that twitch. So upon like looking at him the first time and just trying to figure out who the new guys were, if you scanned him and you didn't know him and know his MO and know much about him, you could quickly mistake him for somebody that was into that type of lifestyle. Radar, oh, ho, 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 what a girl? Runs out the door and runs up on dude, dude back. So, hey, man, make a ball of me. Who is you? Hey, what's up? I'm Radar. Well, Radar, back up off me, man. I don't know what type of time you want. That's not what I'm on. We all look at each other, look at Radar, look at our boss. It's like, yo, this dude is crazy. He done stopped the whole line to talk to this dude, right? 
Who tells him to get up off me, man. I told y'all, when you come in, you have to go into the pod that Radar lives in. Radar quickly tells the boss, hey, man, I need to go back to the building. I got to go back to the building. Radar don't got to go back to the building. Radar wants to go back to the building so he can mess with this dude. Boss tells you, man, we got a bunch of different stuff to do today. You can't, man, I got to go back to the building. I got to use the bathroom. I'll be back after lunch. Radar rolls out. Doesn't come back after lunch. Comes to work the next day. He's telling Barbie Doll, a.k.a. Dog, man, I'm down on him, but the boy be playing hard, acting like he ain't a boy. Like, But you see the way he walks, the way he moves his hips and shoulders, talking about he's crib. Dude was crip, 100%. He had something for Radar's ass. But Radar's, man, he talking about he crip. He ain't no boy. I know a boy when I see one. She just playing hard to get. I guarantee I back in the first week. We know. When he says, dude's claiming he's not a boy. Dude's saying he don't play ball. Dude's saying he ain't on that team. It's a good chance he's not. Because most of the boys would be let it be known. They come in, they're looking to be fed. They're looking to be protected. They're looking to have other dudes who are trying to hurt them kept up off of them. And a guy like Radar would do that. He's with the business. He's with the functions. He wants all the smoke. And if he takes somebody up underneath his wing, ain't nobody about to touch what's his because they know how Radar gets down. So Radar makes this whole statement somehow. Man, playing hard to get, acting like he don't do that and do that. I mean, We're going to see because I'm going to get him moved in the cell with me. That's all bad. Now, as a straight man, You've got a booty bandit after you. The booty bandit now gets you moved into his cell. Doors locked. You got to go to sleep. It's all bad. Days go by. Radar, I got him moved in the cell. I got him moved in the cell. I got him moved in the cell. It's going down. I'm going to feed him. I'm going to talk to him and get him up underneath my wing. And yeah, we're going to do it. And if he don't want to do that, then yeah, we're going to do it. Better part of a week goes by now. He's got the, the dude in the cell with him. He comes in, man, this dude kicking it with the Crips on the yard, talking about he Crip. I ain't never seen a, a gay Crip. That don't even make sense, man. How they going to let somebody be gay and be, be Crip? Like, he talking about if he try, I try anything, he want to deal with them, and they going to deal with him. And Man, I ain't trying to hit it. I'm Radar. I gets what I want. I gets my prize. I will have her. By now, we are knowing that this ain't making sense. If he's saying he's Crip, he's going on the yard, and he's grouping up with the Crips, he's doing meetings with the Crips, he's he's doing all, he's going on the yard, he's flocking up with the Crips, he's going on the yard, he's chilling with Crips, he's throwing up Crip gang signs, he's doing Crip handshakes, Crip calls, and dudes are calling back, and not only that, they're embracing him, he's Crip, if he wasn't, he'd go on the yard and they would smash him out immediately, but the fact that he's chilling with them on a day-to-day -day basis says that he's Crip, we fast forward, Radar don't come to work. My boss is, where's Radar? The other boss, where's Radar? Radar was well knowledge in how the prison worked and the doors, and he was an asset to maintenance. He wasn't an asset along the lines of much else, but he was good at maintenance. Where Radar at? Why Radar ain't come to work? I live in 7 building. I don't know what they got going on down 9 building, but I've been hearing little rumors here and there about the stuff Radar's got going on. Let's go down there and get Radar. So what do we do? We go down 9 building. Go to Radar's cell. Radar's cell's empty. Radar's not in his cell. We go straight to the third floor where the sergeants are. And boss goes in there. And what happened with Radar? What's going on? At which point, the sergeant tells the story. Now, I don't want to say that the dude in today's story told on Radar. I don't know where they got the information from. Could have been people in another cell. Could have been people listening through the vents. I can't say that the dude told him what Radar did. But here's the story as it plays. Radar's been pushing up on his dude. Dude's untold Radar. I'll whoop your ass. I'm not your regular dude. I can fight. And I fight real well. And that muscles you got and all that, that don't intimidate me. Your reputation and what you do with white dudes, that don't intimidate me. Try me. I'm going to show you what it is. As it goes, dude was sleep. Top monk status, laying there on his belly. When he felt something get pushed inside his throat and felt somebody trying to put their hands in the back of his boxes. This dude rolls over and there stands Radar in the middle of the night. No clothes on. Knife to the side of his throat and told him it's going to go one or two ways. It really don't matter to me. And he's got his fingers out and he's in the back of his boy's boxes. And y'all can pretty much imagine what he's trying to do with his finger. The dude rolls over. Radar pushes the knife to his throat tighter. He pulls away from him and punches Radar in the face. Jumps down off the bed and commences to whooping Radar's ass in that cell. To the point that Radar was pretty much 
We're going to do what we all knew he was going to do. He's not play pimping with that knife. He didn't have that knife in there that night with the risk of getting caught with it by the guards for any reason other than one. Things were going to go the way he wanted them to go or he was going to use the knife. Crip dude commences to whooping Radar's ass in there. Beats Radar from the side of the bunk all the way to the door. Hops off the bed. Bam, 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 bam. Get off me. Bam, bam. What are you trying to check my old? Bam, bam. Your fingers don't go there. What I take? Bam, bam. Beats Radar down. Well, he's got Radar down. He's hitting Radar. Radar reaches up. Boom. Hits him with the knife. Dude backs up. Ah. Sticks him a couple more times. Boom, boom. By now, the officers in the control booth see the commotion going on in the cell. They call the people in there. There's Radar all beat the hell up. And the Crip dude stabbed several times. They end up taking Radar out. They end up taking the Crip dude out. They take them both to the hole. A couple months later, Radar returns to work. Doesn't say much about the incident. Goes right back to, what up, girl? Looking out the door, chasing the boys. Crip dude, we never seen him again. But you better believe this. Anywhere that he goes, he's now got his respect. He already had respect. The crypt dudes on the yard where they knew who he was. Yeah, he might act a little feminine, but that's not really who he is. That's just kind of how he walks. Doesn't mean anything. Don't judge a book by its cover. I don't think the dude pressed any charges. Because had he had pressed charges, Radar would not have came back to work. I don't know what he said. I don't know how Radar got out of it. I don't know why Radar didn't get shipped 10 hours away to the mountains. Most guys do. I don't know where the knife went. I don't know if they found the knife. I know if they had found the knife, which there are a whole lot of different places you can hide a knife in a cell. As soon as you see the cops coming, you can bam, bam, hide it real quick. I'm not going to get into it, but I can promise you we can make it disappear and then make it reappear all in a matter of seconds. But they didn't get a knife or radar when it came back to the yard. But radar came back, and I guess he didn't really want to say, but who wants to say, yeah, I tried to check somebody's oil in the middle of the night with my finger while they were sleeping, got my ass whooped, and then had to poke the man up with the knife. Yeah, prison's not a playground. And there are a whole lot of radars, Barbie dolls, dogs, big Danas. There's a whole bunch of those guys waiting for you to walk through the door. My advice to you, live your best life. Don't do what you see others doing. Think before you act. Because it only takes a split second to go from being out here and not having to deal with the radars of the world to being in there and having a man try to hold you down in the middle of your sleep with a sharp piece of metal to your throat, attempting to go where no man has gone before. Radar, radar, radar. Sad, sad, sad. And to, to think back to how this man used to say, man, I don't deserve no, yes, you do deserve a life sentence. You do not deserve to be out in public. You if you're doing that with other men, you are a threat to females for sure. Now, I hate to talk bad about Radar, but we're not going to sit here and act like Radar was a choir boy. We're not going to sit here and act like Radar hadn't broken some of the most heinous laws there is. Not only while he was free, but it seems like once he got locked up, he just kind of took the law book and threw it out the window and said, if I want it, I'm going to have it. If I want to do it, I'm going to do it. Hey, I'm locked up. What can they do to me? Crazy, crazy, crazy. My next story after this is, I got some jail stories coming, but I got to tell Solo a story. Solo was another guy I worked with who found somebody trying to do something bad to a female guard. And he got in the middle of it and tried to save that guard. Being a good guy. I can't say Solo was a bad guy, but he tried to Stop this inmate from doing what he was going to do with this female guard. And things ended very bad for him. And they probably didn't end the way you're assuming they ended. But once I tell the story, you're going to be like, that's just terrible. <laughs> but anyways, these jails, these prisons, these uh, inmates, these booty banded radars. They're all just crazier worlds inside of an already crazy world we live in. And as always, y'all know what I'm doing. Just trying to keep y'all entertained. Are you not entertained? And like always, this is Jay Williams' Let's Live Life. And to all my real ones, and the awesome real ones watching, because y'all still watching me. Y'all know how we do. Salute. Radar, radar, radar.